Jillian Michaels is in the news again, and she's got very strong opinions about Ozempic and the fallout that she predicts is going to happen in two years. So I want to talk about it on today's show. Buckle up, grab your coffee. It's going to be a good one. Welcome back, everybody. It's another episode. We ain't left nowhere. We're always back. We're not? We no. didn't leave anywhere? No. Welcome back. Man, we're always back. Oh, welcome back. Cheers. I got my coffee, though. To Cheers. Get your coffee. Candidly with coffee, episode number 503, you guys. 503. Are you going to talk about our new... Yes. What do you guys think? Do you guys notice anything? Isn't it cute? Drop it in the comments. Yeah. Looks Isn't it dope. cute? We got our little mic flags. I feel so a fish. Al- as Alyssa would say, Alyssa would say a fish. God, I hate these words. They get, they, I don't know what it is with this generation. A fish. Official. <laughs> but anyways, isn't it nice? I love it. I think it looks legit. As you would say, legit. Looks legit. And we match it too, which is even more legit. Our photo. I know. I'm saying we match it. They didn't like, some people don't match their photos. They tend to doctor it up a little bit. They don't look the part, if I'm being honest. Yeah, he took, I took a, I sent him a photo that we took in the gym, and that's how he created our little cartoon. Yep, it's dope. Our little, our little branding, man, is dope. Yeah. All right, you guys. Let's see what I got going on here. Okay, can we discuss for a second Mercury in retrograde? No, I want to punch it in the mouth. It is something, though, right? We're yes. not going crazy. It's been going nuts. It, it didn't allow me to film my podcast on Monday here because the internet went out on me. So on Monday, we had multiple things go wrong. It was like I was having problems with my computer. Things weren't loading up. Then we came to the studio, and the internet went down. And then the the power in one of our gyms went out. There was a sinkhole that happened in San Jose. With tunnels underneath discovered. All this crazy stuff. So I thought to myself, this is weird. Something is weird. Is it Mercury in retrograde? So, of course, I look it up, and it is literally the first day of the first Mercury in retrograde of 2024. What is it again? You said something about the alignment of the planets gets thrown off or something. I never looked into it like you did. I know you looked into it. Yeah, it's something about how the planet rotates or something like that. Anyways, so it causes technology issues. And I don't know. What, do you guys believe in that stuff? I don't know. Oh, Instagram was down too. You forgot about that. I had some friends on IG had problems with Instagram. All kinds of shit was going wacky. Why April 1st though? Of all days on Monday, April 1st. I know. I don't know, but I'm curious. I want to know your thoughts on this. I don't know a lot about Mercury and retrograde, but I do know that it wasn't like placebo type of thing. I didn't find out it was Mercury in retrograde and then start paying attention to the things that were going bad. Things were weird, and so I specifically decided to look up is Mercury in retrograde because this is like a bunch of weird things happening with technology all at one time. So I'm curious, comment. I really want to know your knowledge on Mercury in retrograde, and is it a thing, and what do you feel? Do you believe in that and all of that? Man, today... for both of us, I made a bomb ass lunch, had it all fired up, put it in my stories. No go, two posts, <laughs> didn't n- no uploading. I'm, I'm pissed. Instagram man, like what the fuck is going on, <sighs> man? I need to post. I need to show people how I'm eating. I'm trying to show people some shit. I know one of the ones we did in the coffee shop right now. When we we're at the coffee shop, it did go through finally. Oh okay. Yes, but another one I had to delete and redo. It was a birthday post. So I was annoyed. Because Man, that, it is annoying because listen, we work on the internet. We work on Instagram. We show our stories. We share with everybody. I'm very on. reliant on the internet for almost every single thing I do. Even editing. You'd think like my maybe my editing is offline, but my editing's not offline. I actually the softwares I use require internet. So it's just a freaking shit show if the Wi-Fi is bad or the internet goes down. It's very frustrating. I want to remind you guys that tonight, 5 p.m. Pacific time, we are returning to YouTube Live, one of our favorite things to do on our Friday night date night. Oh, We haven't done it in a while because we got off track with it and then we did the Instagram Live instead. But we're on 5 p.m. Pacific time tonight, so make sure you guys tune in. Join us. We love that. It's fun. So over there, you can scream, we're back. I can scream, we're back? Yeah. Okay. Welcome back. I can say welcome back. There you go. Welcome back. (laughs) 
Like we're back. <laughs> so we come to the studio. We actually film our Patreon first, and then we jump on YouTube Live, and then we go out to dinner. So where are we going to go out to dinner, actually? I don't know. I'll take a Puerto Azul. Yeah, because then we can have the ceviche tostadas, like high protein. I like, I like the shrimp cocktail full of jumbo shrimp protein. protein, three tacos. Perfect. Yeah, that's a good idea. It's so macro-friendly, too. I don't know. I was thinking about that today. Mm-hmm. I'm impressed. You actually put thought into it and yeah. had an answer for me. And no chips, I guess you said. No, I I'm might on bring a, my own. I'm on a no chip, no chips until after my cut because it's just pointless calories that That's I true. consume. So no chips hold because chips. I'm, I'm on my hold the chips. I'm on my cut. But yeah, that's. I like when I make hard and fast decisions and I just stick with it because it's easier to stick with it than to be wishy washy. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, you're right. And it helps because chips are tricky. They're so damn good that you end up, oh, I'm just going to have one, then two, then three. So that's a good decision that yeah. you make. Decide, commit, execute. Exactly. I did it before. I did it when I was originally cutting for after my menopause, when I realized I was in menopause and finally stepped on the scale. I quit chips and drinking at the same time. Yeah, that's true. You did do that. Drinking, not an issue, man. I do not miss it. I do not interested. I might have so much clarity. I don't have social anxiety. I love, love a good soda, a good Diet Coke, and me that too. is sufficient for me. And don't forget coffee. Yeah, I do love this this coffee. This is from the Hannah Coffee Company on uh, the Alameda. So good, and it doesn't give me a tummy ache because Starbucks definitely does. Hella good because it's not acidic. I'm a coffee guy. I'm a coffee through and through. I'm a snob. I could tell you the difference in, from Pete's to Starbucks. Even though pizza is still my favorite, this is right there with it. This is smoother. No, like you said, you don't taste any acidity after. Mm-hmm. Acid. Yeah. It's smooth. <clears throat> yeah. All right, you guys. Make sure if you're not already following us on Instagram, candidly underscore with coffee. We will go live there at least once a week. We'll do a little gym warm up and go live. So you don't want to miss that. And make sure you're subscribed here on YouTube. Getting lots and lots of subscribers every single day. Oh, man, it's blowing up. Thanks to you guys, too. We yeah. keep saying you guys are the ones that push us, man, mm-hmm. because I know you talk about us. You probably talk to your friends, family, and they talk about us and they watch us. And the next, you know, they're friends. It's just a trickle effect. Yeah, it's so cool. And I appreciate it so much. And we couldn't do this without you guys. And we wouldn't have even gotten this far with our cute little mic flags. That's what they call them without everyone. We're going to have to do a little milestone celebration with our people when you hit 50K because that's halfway to 100 to the big goal. Just yeah. a little something, something. I don't know what we'll do. Yeah, Just throwing it out there. I wonder if I'll hit 50K before the halfway point of the year. Because my goal was oh, to yeah. be at 100K by the end of the year, which was a completely lofty, ridiculous goal. I was not on pace to be at 100K. But I don't know. But let me stop you there. But sometimes you got to do that in life. Mm-hmm. You got to just go for it. You can't yeah. be scared. You're like, you know what? I'm going to do it. It's like a weight loss journey. You know what? That's a lofty goal. 100 pounds. Damn, that's hard. I can't do it. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yep. And make sure that you guys, if you haven't left us a review on Apple Podcasts, I'd appreciate that as well. Or Spotify. I noticed that we have 30 reviews over there or something like that. I never knew that we had reviews over there, but we have quite a few reviews over oh, there. Spotify is a booming Yeah, podcasts. and we have 146 <laughs> reviews on Apple Podcasts. So if you guys can just get us to 150 there, that'd be nice. Yes, it would. We appreciate all the help. Like I said, you guys are our people and you guys push this show and we keep growing Every week. All right. Moving on to the hot coffee topic. (laughs) Let's not let it go too too long. Last episode, I got sidetracked because I got a text message (laughs) and Mike got annoyed because I let the cough. (laughs) Too much. The drip too long. You move around long. You make my ADHD go crazy. I don't know why. I don't have the patience for it. When I was editing it, I laughed so hard. I actually cut out some of the coffee, so you couldn't tell how long I went, but I went quite a long time. You, like, froze in your thoughts. (laughs) Anyways, can we talk about Vanderpump Rules really quick? I know you don't watch it, but you're aware of the... Blah. But you're aware of the drama, right? Yes. You remember there was... So Ariana was the girlfriend that got cheated on. So I'm watching the new season and everybody's upset with Ariana because she's not getting over it fast enough. Like she still has a lot of animosity and anger towards him. It annoys me actually now that I think about it. Like everyone else, they're over it. So they want her to be over it. But he blew up their entire life. Yeah. Like, of course, she's still upset. He's 
he completely betrayed her and blew up their entire life. For sure. That was a lot of wasted years. How many years were they together? Like 10. It's a lot of wasted years. You can't blame her. Yeah. And in this last episode, he, you know, I don't know. He's, everyone's buying his bullshit. See, he's turning up the charm and everybody is like feeling bad for him again and friends with him again because he's turning up the charm. And I hate to say this, but it reminds me of what's going on with my dad. Narcissistic tendencies. Yes, it is because he's turning up the charm when he needs to get people back on his side. That's a narcissist. I can see right through it. I see, like, she's annoyed because she can see it a mile away. I can see it in her eye. Like, she's, I can see what he's doing. You guys don't know. Like, the mask came off, and now I know him, who he really is. Yeah. And you guys are falling for his BS. It totally reminds me of what my dad has done because he tried, he's trying to, he did that sucking everybody back in slowly, except for two of us, three of us, actually. Yeah. But, and because he's turning on the charm and the he's t dialing down the narcissism when he needs to because yeah. he knew he pushed too far and he lost a couple. So he needs to dial it back in. Yeah. Anyways, that's why it reminded me. I think that's probably why at first I was seeing everyone's side. Oh, Tom. But in the last couple episodes, no, I'm I don't like. I sorry for him. Oh, Tom, my ass. He did a bad thing. Yeah. Anyways, but then I started to like relate to Ariana because I could see it in her face. She's, you guys are falling for it. Like yeah. you're falling victim to his charm. This is why he gets away with what he does. I don't know. Yeah. People are some suckers. That's what they are. Straight up little suckers, followers, sheep. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. go with the flow. And they're mad at her for holding her ground. That's why I think I'm being selfish. This is not really a Vanderpump Rules story. This is like a personal story. Maybe I'll dive a little deeper into it in, in Patreon. But I think that's why I got a little triggered because I feel it happened in my personal life a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's similar. It's a similarity there in mm -hmm. your personal life. Like you yeah. said, your dad pushed you hard, pushed three of you away. Now he's dialing it down. He's trying to retain the other two. Yeah, and then, it, not even them, but I mean, like, the extended family or people that have been affected by him in the past, perhaps, they how soon they forget because he dials back up the charm. And then they look at someone like Ariana or me mm -hmm. and think, we get we are made to be the bad guy because we have drawn a line in the sand and have very strong boundaries. The person with the boundaries always looks like the cold-hearted one or the bad guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's all right. She'll win in the end just like you will. Anyways, maybe I'll, I'll dive a little deeper into that on Patreon, on the after show. But um, moving on, I have a little message from 1UP Nutrition here. I saw a really good explanation about creatine in, I think it was Mind Pump, actually. Mind Pump was talking about creatine and how women are afraid to take creatine because they feel like it's gonna, they're going to gain weight or feel bloated. So I wanted to clarify, first of all, we take Pure Rebuild from 1UP Nutrition. Yes, we we do. love it. It's one of our favorite supplements. We take it religiously every day. And Sal on Mind Pump had a good explanation for the difference between the type of water retention you get from creatine and the type of bloating that people are used to. So from creatine, it is your muscles pull water into the muscles. So you're actually will look more ripped with creatine. True that. It shows in my pictures when I take photos. You know what I'm saying? Because think about it like, like a balloon that's filled with air looks tight, right? Yes. So if your muscles are filled with water, they look tight. Yep. There you have it brings them to the surface. You see the striations more. You see the yes. cuts more. Yes. Whereas bloat, traditional bloat that people are thinking of, so let's just say you ate too much sodium, you ate soy sauce or something like that. That bloat is in the fat cells. Your fat cells hold water and it's subcutaneous right below the surface of the skin and you're squishy. That is not the kind of water retention that you get from creatine. And so I think when people hear, oh, I, you hold water with creatine, they think of that kind of bloat. It's not bloat like that. It's water retention. Your muscles actually makes you look cut, defined. And then besides the look, it actually makes you stronger. That's true. Which ultimately helps you to build muscle. And that's why it is such a good supplement. It is very well studied. Lots of data to back it up. And there's also additional benefits for women too, like cognitive benefits and mood enhancement, as well as muscle building. So we love the 1UP Nutrition Pure Rebuild. Watermelon's actually my favorite flavor, but they have some a new flavor that's dropping. Actually, it just dropped today. 
Ooh, that sounds good. That one good. sounds good. It just dropped today. And what's crazy about this uh, creatine? I also anti for a long time, remember? I didn't take none. Then eventually I just said, I'll give it a shot. Because I was like, let me see if this is for real. And it's the truth. I started noticing my strength going up. I was like, oh, man, this is not saying it's steroids, but it's, it's close up there. It's strong. It works good. Yeah. I felt the difference. There's been a couple of times, not the cre creatine, you get the benefits over time. Like after 30 days of taking it consistently, you start to see the benefits. But I thought I could get away with not, I don't know. I just got lazy for a few days and I stopped to taking it with me to the gym. My creatine plus pre-workout, man, it makes a huge difference difference in the quality of my workout when I don't take my little concoction. I know. I notice you do that. I do uh, <clears throat> first thing in the morning, fill up a glass of water. I do my electrolytes, my creatine, mix that together. And every morning, religiously, I do that because when I go to the gym, I want to make sure I got the creatine in me. I got my electrolytes in me. I'm hydrated, not dehydrated. So I, need, I drink coffee after that, after a few glasses of water, plus the drink. All right, you guys, moving on to Comment Corner. The first one comes to us from Nisi Combs 3533. You guys are so real. Everything you said makes sense. We make it so complicated. Why do you think gurus or experts say things? Do they really believe it? You know what? I think some of them believe it. I think some of the gurus that like claim a certain diet is the best or whatever. Yeah. I think that they've amassed a following when that diet was maybe at its peak and they get afraid to back off of it because they're afraid it'll affect their livelihood. So I do feel that's part of it. Of course. I do think some of them believe it and I think some of them it's financially charged. Come on. We already know it is. A lot yeah. of it's financially charged. Yeah. <clears throat> and there we speak it into existence like it's the end all be all but no it's not it's bullshit all right moving on to the next comment patsy doyer on 647 loved this episode how do you get mentally tough with food meaning how to stop overeating that's a loaded question for one giving yourself boundaries by tracking macros because it's like how I think about it is you're, must, you're less likely to overspend your money if you are watching it dwindle down in your bank account. Yes. But yeah. if you never look at your bank account and you just spend, you'll overspend because you're not seeing what's happening. So tracking macros is a really good way. You're setting, you're giving yourself boundaries. Humans do really well with boundaries. And you couldn't have said it better because you're right. You need boundaries. Like I said, it's like... Not knowing what's in your bank account and just aimlessly, blindly spending money. Like, it's going to dwindle if you don't watch mm -hmm. what, you, what you're doing. Same thing with your calories. People think they can guess what they're eating. They have this weird ego about them thinking like they can figure it out. They can't. But I also think that if you're not tracking macros, you can live in denial. I don't really eat that much. But when you track, you're like, oh, crap. And Whoa. it will prevent you from going back to the fridge. It's also what I think has helped quite a bit, actually is putting the restaurants that are required to put calories on food because yeah. it makes you face the music when you're placing it, when you're ordering like a cheesecake factory. Oh my God, if I eat that entire plate, it's 1500 calories. No, I'm not going to order that. That's crazy. Or the cheesecake, right? I'm much less likely to have a piece of cheesecake now that I know it's 1200 calories for right. a piece of cheesecake. That's insane for a piece of cheesecake. And they have higher ones than that up to 2000 calories I've seen. Yeah. That is insane. So it, I think that helps. I think seeing things and paying attention to labels helps with overeating. So that's important. The other thing that helps is eating balanced meals. So if you eat a balanced meal that has fats and protein along with the carbs, that helps to control your blood sugar response, which helps to control your appetite. So true. I, I make sure every meal have fats, protein, and some form of carbs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how the order is, but just got to have it in there. Yeah, balance does help. And then also you just have to know why are you overeating? Try to identify what, why are you overeating? Are you letting yourself get too hungry and then you can't stop? Or are you emotional? Are you eating your emotions? Are you eating out of boredom? Doing a little bit of troubleshooting to figure out, okay, when and why am I overeating? Because you, you need to know why something happens before you can try to fix it. So identify 
and it might be multiple things. There might be multiple reasons why you're overeating, but identifying the main reason and trying to get a hold of that and then move on to the other reasons. But for me, the number one help is knowing how much you're eating, holding yourself accountable to how much you're actually eating. Because otherwise I feel like most people let themselves live in denial and that's why they 100% overeat. 100% they do. They overeat by a lot. Oh, I overeat that much. I eat healthy. Okay, your body doesn't seem to agree with you on the eating healthy or you don't eat too much part. So what are we saying? Funny people say that. I hear that so much. Yeah, I hear that a lot too. I know. I I overeat if I don't monitor it. And the reasons why I personally overeat or if I let myself decide I'm not going to track. So like on a cheat day, I can definitely on a cheat day eat more calories. But if I do not track on a cheat day, I will eat probably a thousand calories more than if I tracked. Because yeah, when you're true. tracking, you're like, oh man, yeah, that okay, that's way too much. I got to stop. No, you're right. I'm guilty of that. I've gone over on Saturdays where I've overdone it too much. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm a little too crazy. I got to chill. Yeah. So facing the music, that that's one of the biggest things that, that helps in my opinion. All right. Moving on to the next comment. Alina C7919. Oprah's audience only listening and hoping to hear you get Ozip. <laughs> Facts. That's it. Everybody wants the goddamn magic pill, man. The snake oil. So bad. <laughs> No one's just willing to do the work. Oh, like you just said in the previous comment, learn to track macros. It's game-changing, life-changing. Trust me, you guys. It's the best thing. I didn't discover it. She taught me macros. But let me tell you something. Ever since she taught me macros, my body's changed. My mental health has changed. Everything's changed. Just the mm -hmm. way I move. Mm -hmm. I'm confident. I'm not scared of food. I'm not. Say, for example, I don't want to stay on this answer too long, but say, for example, mm -hmm. I eat a burrito tomorrow. I mess up. All right, cool. I ate a burrito. No worries. I know what, how many calories they are. I know I got very little left. I can eat a huge protein yogurt bowl to make up for the missing protein that's supposed to be plugged in there. And that's it. Stop for the whole day. Because I know how to fast. Mm -hmm. I, I could, if I wanted to do that. Yeah. So you can make adjustments accordingly. Macros is just makes it easier because you that's understand it. how much your body you're taking in. The other thing, what I notice is when I eat according to my macros, I feel good. Eating makes me feel good. I, I enjoy my meal tremendously, but then I'm still, I still feel good after I eat. When I am not tracking macros, I do not feel good after I eat. I feel like crap because I always overdo it. Yeah, that's so true. You're like this. Hold your stomach. Like, oh, I overdid it. After we eat our meals that we enjoy, I've never held my stomach. I never had unbuttoned my pants. That Ever. And that's the huge difference. It's like, how about macros means I can... Enjoy my food, eat what I want, eat what I love, but the proper portions, therefore, I will not feel sick after. I will not feel like I need to take a nap. I yeah. will not feel like I have to unbutton my pants, and I will not feel guilty. So why would I want to not do that? That's perfect. It just helps me make sure that I'm eating according to what I should be eating for my body. And I don't know why people are so anti. And remember how much I used to take naps after I ate? I'd yeah. crash and burn. Mm -hmm. I barely All take the time. Them. I only take like little 15 minutes ones if I'm tired. Obviously, we get up early, work hard, work. I need a little tiny one sometimes, but not always. I don't have that. But it's not after my food that I get yeah. the crash. I don't take a nap at all. Not at all. All right, moving on to the next comment. Sheree Wood, 4022, please hear me. I'm totally team Janine when you say, I'm totally team Janine. But when you say that a menopausal woman needs to sit in her discomfort, that can be heard as sit in her torment. I feel for that woman. I think there's a better way to say what you want, and she might just need help with some hormone replacement and looking for guidance. I'm no expert, but I am a nurse and a postmenopausal woman. I don't want anyone, regardless of their illness, condition, or healthcare journey, to not seek treatment or advice. I wanted to address this comment because I think that it was in my vlog. I was talking about sitting discomfort. I was not referring to sitting in discomfort based on conditions that we feel like I'm a huge advocate for women's health and we are completely overlooked a lot of times not only for our menopausal symptoms but even like pain management childbirth yeah. yes we're screwed over so I think that when I edit these things down to I might have taken that conversation a little out of context but it actually bothered me that it came off that way because I'm like, oh, no, because I go at length on my podcast about how I feel about that my menopause symptoms were overlooked. 
completely even though i said hey i'm not feeling the best oh but you're fine you look great and i was pissed but i had to go elsewhere outside of my general same, practitioner same thing happened to me when i went to my doc and i was like hey can i get blood work done because i want to see what my test does oh you're fine your weight is good your high blood pressure is good look at you i want to I'm, listen doctor with all due respect you're not in my body you don't know how i feel just because i look a certain way i want my libido back my energy yeah. back so what i meant when i was talking i was more focused on sitting in your discomfort that you learn you have to learn how to be uncomfortable with being in a calorie deficit and being yes. hungry yep not with whether you're feeling like shit if you're feeling like shit because you have health issues or you have something going on or you feel like you have something going on you need to get answers until you get answers that make sense push and push your doctors get second and third opinions i do not believe in we should sit in our discomfort. I, I'll even take it a step further. I think it is crazy what they expect women to do without giving them like something for pain. I don't know if you're aware, but there's a serious disparagement with when it comes to women getting services in like a gynecology appointment or something where they're not given anything for pain. They do very painful procedures. Like I, when I received, I had years ago, I had, um, what was it called? Cancer cells in my cervix. Yeah. So they had to go in and do a procedure. I was yeah. not given anesthesia. Damn. Really? It was extremely painful. That's not cool, man. If, I'd be um, but but in the medical field, for some reason, like men, when they have procedures done, they're given more pain management than women are. Like to me, it is ridiculous that women even consider not getting pain management for childbirth. Yeah. That That's is, like saying, hey, you know what? Insane. I want to go get some surgery done and not have pain management. It's just yeah. crazy to me. And sometimes people are even given or women are even given like a hard time if they want to get something for their pain. Like when they're having a child? Yeah, like they'll get, oh, oh, the anesthesiologist is taking a nap or he's like on a break. It's going to be a few hours. Like, no, it should be like critical 911. If a woman is yeah. saying, hey, I need pain management now the pain got too hard that should be an emergency situation but they like i remember when i asked for and this is totally off topic but it it's how i feel about i'm passionate about women's health and not sitting in discomfort when it comes to that kind of stuff when i was having tyler at first i could handle the contractions and so i didn't i said i was okay without my epidural yet and then when I needed my epidural, they're like, oh, it was in the middle of the night. The anesthesiologist is on a break or whatever. We'll page him. It took forever before I can get my epidural. I was in labor with him for 12 hours wanting an epidural. Wow. I was in like a 30-hour labor. But to me, that's unacceptable. Can't women die from that kind of pain? Is it dangerous from childbirth? I don't know if you can die from the pain, but... It's excruciating though, right? excruciating is an understatement Jeez. and i think that a lot of times so in those circumstances that's what i mean i absolutely i apologize if it came off as i was sounding like i think women should sit in their discomfort in any way shape or form i am obviously a post-menopausal woman who sat in discomfort for a year without getting my questions answered by my doctor and that's not what i meant so i apologize if it came across that way because I think that we should absolutely seek help and we shouldn't just learn to live with our symptoms because a lot of times we just get, they stamp us with something that says, oh, you're in menopause. That's why you feel that way. Yeah. yeah. And they expect, to, oh, yeah. okay, thank you. Did you guys not evolve in medical school? Yeah, like, you're still stuck in the old science from 50 yeah. years ago? That's what I feel like. They're still like dinosaurs. Like they're still yeah, stuck they just the want to say, oh, you feel like, it's normal. You're in menopause. No, it's not normal to feel like crap. Let's do something about it. Exactly. It's, it's like, just annoying. It's like want to blame Anyways, thank you, Sheree. I appreciate you bringing that to my attention. I definitely wanted to address it because I definitely did not mean that. But I do, however, mean what I do mean and what I meant is don't look for things to sit in your victim mentality. No. I do mean that. Don't look for things. Oh, I can't lose weight or I can't get out of this rut because I'm in menopause. And so I'm going to put the stamp on myself. I actually meant quite the opposite. We're not victims. Let's address how we feel and do something about it. Yeah. And what I was trying to say is in terms of weight loss, you can do something about it, no matter what your challenges are. 
don't look for someone to tell you it's okay because you have this, that, and the other. Don't worry about it. Just sit in the corner and stay that way because you have a reason to be that way. What I meant was, no, don't, don't do that. Push forward and do something about it. And yes, when it comes to weight loss, you're going to have to learn how to sit in your discomfort. Oh, and that's yeah. basically that's what I meant. You're going to have to face adversity, plain and simple, no way around it. That is correct. All right, you guys, moving on. Mega Fit Meals. Let's talk about Mega Fit Meals. My absolute favorite snack from Mega Fit Meals is the banana nut muffins with a tablespoon of almond butter on it. Have you had one yet? Yeah, it's good. But I want to try some new snacks. So what's up with some new snacks? Some new Mega Fit Meals? Snacks. Some new Mega Fit Meal snacks. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. You're not, are you with me or not? Are you lost somewhere in thought? No, but snacks for Mega Fit Meals? That's I'm, a snack. That's not a meal. No, it's not a meal. That's what I'm saying. Oh, you want me to order something different? Yes, I want to try something different. I know, but you know what my problem is? I get on kicks, and then I like, so all I ever, I just keep ordering this because I'm on this kick. I get addicted to something, and that is a snack I have almost every day. I get a muffin, a tablespoon of nut butter, and so I haven't wanted to order. It's not like I'm going to order all these snacks, so I haven't wanted to order any You're other only snacks. ordering for yourself, though. I actually like the PB&J, even though, I, that's, to me, that's considered kind of a snack. That's not a complete meal. Even though that's protein, but it's heavy in calories. No, I get I do a half PB and J and then the legendary chips, and that's a meal for me. That's like a lunch. Yeah. For me, that's a snack. But look at that muffin. It's so good. But it anyways, is. you guys, down in the description, link for Mega Fit. If you haven't tried them before, I have a one time use discount code. So just hit me up in the DMs and I'll give you guys a discount code. So you can check them out because I, I am very happy with them. I love them. Their food is good, though. We'll All say that. right. Let's talk about the Ozempic fallout that Jillian Michaels was talking Here about. Here we go. So she was talking about how she predicts that in two years... The there's going to be some major fallout from all the people that are on Ozempic. I believe her. She knows what she's talking about. She's a smart lady, very educated, especially in the fitness space. She's been around the game a long time. And I understand what she's talking about, and I see what she's talking about. She's referring to, for one, there is a massive amount of people that are going on Ozempic that are using it for vanity weight, especially in the celebrity world. Yeah. They always got to ruin a good thing. And sometimes it annoys me about that world, the celebrity world, because they feel like, I feel like they feel like they're entitled to everything. Like everything that comes out that's new and latest and greatest, that they have access to it before everybody else. Like they're more special than the average human. It's because they have status, money. So they have, they're able to cut the line basically. And it, it annoys me a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Not that I care about their lives, but it's annoying. And I'm sure it's annoying to a lot of people because some people use it, like my friend, I have a close friend of mine who's diabetic. He needs his medicine. He's been on Ozempic for years before this hype train came around. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She was saying that uh, some of the like less, the very common things that are not like critical health things, but women are losing their hair. Yes. Because True. they're not eating enough protein. They're yep. losing massive amounts of muscle. They're getting skinny fat. That's true. So they're getting this thing called, and I know you guys have heard it. It's called the Ozempic face. And I, I had a theory on the Ozempic face, actually, that I couldn't find anything to support it. So this is just my random theory, but I'm just going to put it out there. The issue with Ozempic is people are losing their body composition shifting. They're losing a lot of lean muscle. Dr. Peter Atia talked about this. Mm -hmm. He said, he goes, as patients coming in, they're losing weight, they're getting skinny, but they're like skinny fat. You know what I'm saying? Their body fat percentage is high. It doesn't show by it physically. You look at them like, oh, they look skinny, but their muscle, they're losing a lot of muscle mass. And it's dangerous for women who are getting older because osteoporosis. You want strong bones. And that's what Jillian Michaels was saying. We don't even know what the fallout is going to be. These long-term effects of women or people that are growing old with not a lot of muscle. Yes. Because here's the problem. The problem is these people that are they get addicted to it, right? They go on. There there is no exit strategy for people who are using it for vanity weight. For people who are obese, that obesity is gonna kill them before Ozempic is gonna kill them, they just need to stay on the medication because there yeah. is no exit plan. Nope. When you come off, the weight comes back. It is just like a fury. Yeah, the the studies are all of the records are showing the weight comes back. Sustainability once it comes off, it's not there. 
So the problem is people go off and on. And every time they go off and on, they lose more muscle. Every time they lose muscle, they come back, they come off of it, they gain weight back, they gain body fat. So each cycle, they are losing more lean muscle, gaining more body fat. Their body composition is shifting. Yeah. I had a my theory that I was talking about was about the ozempic face. So the whole thing with the ozempic face is everyone has these like gaunt faces. Yes, true that. So Jillian Michaels was saying that the gaunt face is because of obviously fat loss in the face. Yep. And she says like a breakdown of collagen because of the lack of protein intake is happening. But then I also thought our faces have a lot of muscle in them. It's probably also muscle loss in the face. And I haven't seen anything oh. written about that. So you guys can say, hey, I heard that first on Kennedy with Coffee when it starts to become a thing. Yeah. But I feel like that's why they actually look like different people. Like their facial structure is changing. They don't look like the same person. I think that if I went on Ozempic, I would not only with the fat loss and the muscle loss in my face, I would look like a completely different person. Age you as well. Oh. You look much older. Yeah. Because having a little bit of fat in your face keeps you somewhat youthful. I got fat in my face too. Same thing. I don't have a skinny. Some guys, when and I got lean. I got the 7% body fat, 165. Yeah. My face didn't look all sucked up. No. You know what I'm talking about? That yeah. sucked up look where you look older. Yeah, and I know I actually there's a place in uh, L.A. called the Face Gym where they go you go they go into your face and they massage it because they their theory is that if you build the muscle in your face and you do these facial exercises, it'll lift things up and stuff. You have muscles in your face. That's how we move our face. That's how we have expressions. Exactly. So then it made me think if you have muscle in your face and when you lose lean muscle, you can't tell your body where to lose it from. You lose it from everywhere. So, yes, you're losing. They're also losing muscle in their faces and that's why their faces look so different. So take a look at this. She's rumored Lady Gaga to have used Ozempic. Look at her face in the right. It looks like a different person. Yes, she does. That's crazy. Do you guys see it? It's up on the screen. She mirrors her hair line far back in the current pic yeah if she who knows she's probably lost hair as well because you you do lose hair because i know bariatric patients they have a lot of thinning of the hair it's i know someone personally family member hair loss really oh yeah you know it is i know but yes exactly so let's see another one jessica simpson is also rumored to have used oh what the ozempic She cho- totally changed her face, oh. hollowed, out, hollowed out of the eyes. Look like a zombie, dude. It just completely changed her face. Oh, no. Now, this is all alleged, by the way, because we don't know for sure, but they're saying that's what she has Ozempic face, basically. Why, people? Why? Just do the work, man. Stop also, looking for the easy way out. How about this one? Sharon Osbourne. She's another She one. looks skeletal. Yes, she does. She literally looks skeletal. Mm-hmm. It aged her by 20 years. Isn't her daughter on Ozempic too as well? Yes. And the son? Because I know the son was heavy. I don't know if the son, but there's definitely something there that happens to the face. And this, you guys, this is all brand new. It is. This is brand new. This is in the last year. People are really jumping on. And I also noticed Dolores from Real Housewives of New Jersey. She looks different in the face. Like it completely changes the way you look in the face. But if everybody says like doctors and people in the fitness space, they say that pr- muscle is the key to longevity. That's yeah, the key. 100%. It's the fountain of youth. It's the key to longevity, to living a long life and being able to walk and being agile into your elderly years. Not, not only that. You got to be able to lift shit in life. There's going to be a point in time you have to lift things in life. You need some muscle to lift things, period. And I lift a lot of weights, but things are on the house. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You need to be able to sustain yourself. People. Yeah, I feel, so I, I agree with Jillian that the long-term fallout is going to be very frail, older people. It's yeah. going to shift. The pendulum is going to shift. And now it's like these skinny, frail, elderly people are going to be products of having abused Ozempic for years because what happens is they become addicted to being skinny and they go off and on. Because this is like a new, it's like a new wave. There hasn't been case study of 20 years. So we don't know what the 20 year effect is. You know what I'm saying? So who knows if they keep going down this road, what they're going to look like. 
that's what Jillian was saying. She even said, like, in two years from now, we're going to start to see a serious fallout. Now, obviously, there's other stuff, um, you know, allegedly there's a stomach paralysis and all oh, this yeah. other yep. crazy stuff. Then I don't know what the long term effects are. And like I've said, I'm not against Ozempic for people with obesity, where they, whereas their obesity and comorbidities are more dangerous to them than muscle loss and, and all of that. My stance hasn't changed on that. However, I see it every day. I can see it. So I follow some and I can I have the eye for it. I can tell who's on Ozempic. I could tell the type of where the weight comes off and how it comes off and how they get their bodies look. It's a different kind of look that they get. I can see it a mile away. I can see it in their legs too. There's some mm-hmm. women that you that you watch on some of those housewife shows. Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's a popular one. She sings as far as I go and you can see it in her legs. Her yeah. legs look so scrawny and weak. Yeah. And she's actually denied it. It's Erica Jane. You're uh, allegedly Erica yeah. Jane doesn't use Ozempic. Come she's on, denied man. it. And that's cap. But I can see it. And so, I, but here's the thing that's alarming for me. I've noticed, and I will not say who they are, but there's been several young influencers, young, that are in their mid 20s that have not admitted to doing it, to using it, but I can see it clearly. Influencers? Influencers, like in the fitness space that, that are, that they sell programs and oh, they're in man. the fitness space, fitness influencers. That it's very obvious to me yeah. that they have used it. They've over the past, say, six months dropped 20 pounds when maybe they didn't need to lose 20 pounds, but they want you get like this obsession with being thin. You get addicted to it. Yeah. It's very obvious to me. And they and I can always tell, and they're not admitting it. And people are asking and they avoid the question all all together. Of course they do. They also do not address the obvious weight loss. If you are here this is my opinion okay i'm gonna go on a soapbox for a little bit if you are in the space the fitness space you are a coach you are a weight loss coach you help people with fitness and you sell programs and you've clearly lost weight and then if someone looks at you go wow i need to lose 20 pounds i want to buy your program you could tell me exactly how you did it but you're not going to tell them that you use ozempic that's a problem yeah it's not the same thing and i'm gonna go off topic it's almost like some of these jacked ass dudes online that buy my program, you're gonna get jacked like me. Are you gonna speak the obvious, brother? You're on testosterone, steroids, not just TRT. You're beyond that. You're past that. Just be honest. That's all. I, just be open. Yeah. I hate when they try to deny, sidestep. Come on, man. Just be honest. That's it. Just tell these guys the truth. Don't sell them snake oil. They're not gonna get like that just by following your program. Tell them all the other shit you're on. That's all I'm saying. Just be honest. I agree. I think that. I, it's scary because I see it more and I see a serious problem. It's going to be some sort of, it's going to morph into some sort of disorder. And it's not really like an eating disorder. It's like a not eating disorder. It's almost like an addiction. It, people are going to have to probably even eventually go into some sort of like rehab for it. It's going to cause massive problems mentally. Mentally, mentally, because... You're digging yourself a ditch, people. You, you got to fix. Where we say this, before you even start any kind of program, doesn't matter what your eating plan is, find what works for you, stick to it, but you got to fix what's on the inside. And what's on the inside is up here. You got to fix that first. You can't just put a Band-Aid over. And that's what they're doing. It's a Band-Aid. It's a temporary Band-Aid, and it's, it's going to come back to haunt them. Yeah, and what happens is it's the same thing like with them. Um, and, and actually, somebody commented on that as well, and I've experienced that. With clients, I've had clients come to me saying, hey, I had bariatric surgery like five years ago and I gained all my weight back. I need to jump back on a program, whatever, because they start they don't they didn't fix the issues that got them overweight to begin with. The the shrinking of the stomach, the stapling of the stomach just was a temporary band aid. It forced them to eat less. But when they stretch that stomach back out, the weight comes back. And like with Ozempic, it's another issue. Jillian Michaels brought it up. She says it's going to cause, for one, she says eventually her prediction is your body will become resistant to the medication. It will not retain its effectiveness, just like caffeine, just like anything else that we take. Eventually, your body figures out a way around it. So she thinks it'll lose its effectiveness and then people will freak out. Oh my God, it's not working anymore. They'll do more extreme things. The other thing is a long period of time of eating very little calories, your metabolism will shift downward. 
that's what happens. It's called metabolic adaptation. So that's going to be a problem. So these people are putting themselves in a position to where they absolutely will not be able to lose any kind of weight without the medication. So they're going to become addicted to the medication. They're going to destroy their metabolism, basically. Yeah. So it's going to destroy their mental state. It's That's going to true. cause a lot of mental problems. It is. And now, well, watch this. Here's my prediction. I'm going to, go, I'm going to piggyback on what Julian Michael said. Watch all these special rehab centers for all these, these yeah, this situation happen. Oh, they're yeah. going to start sprouting like crazy. Another business avenue. People are paying attention to the game. I see something here. I'm going to have some clinics here, so I hope these people later on. I, watch. That's my prediction. We'll come back to this a few years down by the line, see if it's true down the line. Yeah, I really don't even think it'll be a few years down the line. I really feel like I can see a huge problem we're going to be talking about this five years from now and thinking like what the hell happened you when you watch tv nowadays it's crazy you see all of these people all that didn't have 30 pounds to, to lose to begin with 30 pounds lighter yeah yeah you got to remember weight loss is something that needs to come off slowly not fast it's not a fast game it's a long game it's a slow game you can't take it off fast just like you took it off fast it'll come back faster the funny thing is it's like a trickle effect in the business world, right? So yeah. it's probably helping plastic surgeons because facial plastic surgery and implants, they're probably fillers, implants, all kinds of things to, oh, yeah. to combat sure. the ozempic face. You've got the people that are going to sprout up. that are going to help people with their disordered eating. Yes. You've got all this stuff that's going to be a product of what's happening. It's going to create like a new funnel of business, basically. Yeah, it's you're crazy. And, and then someone else is going to capitalize on this. But this is irresponsible. What's happening right now is irresponsible. It's not, it doesn't take a rocket science. It doesn't take Jillian Michaels to predict what's happening. You can clearly see it. And it's hard because, like I've said, I honestly would have taken it if I was overweight. But I, I'm glad that I didn't have access to it now. I think back because I would have taken it. 100% I would have taken it. When you're 100 but then I would have, Yeah, but then I would have put myself in a horrible predicament. Yeah. Who knows what I would have done to myself. Would I have been relying on the medication? Would I have ever been able to put on muscle? Who knows? what? It, I'm glad the option wasn't there for me because it's, you're glad you don't have access to these, a feel-good drug because it will feel good if you take it, but it's going to ruin your life. Yeah. You said it. It's, you become like immune to it. And then what? You need more? You need something stronger? What's next? It's like drug addicts, the, the ones that graduate from oxycodone. All right, they become immune to it. Then they go to heroin because they need some strong. Then the heroin's not enough. Now I got to go to fentanyl and play with death. I feel like I'm almost on death door. Exactly. With, uh, now that's a new thing. Like you see it all over the streets now. Fentanyl has taken over. They don't want heroin no more. It's too weak. It's what do you do? It's insane. Like, You're yeah. already eating so little. What more and can you, you do? What more can you do? You know what I mean? Oh, I'm just not going to eat at all. New trend. We don't eat. That's the new trend. Oh my God. Don't you say that because somebody, they might start a new trend doing that. Then guess what? You're going to boop, boop. You're going to be dropping like flies. You know what I'm wondering? I'm wondering if it's affected the restaurant industry that is a good question right because nobody's eating you're right they push food on their plate they're not eating they are eating i there was actually an influencer that came out came on that i follow and she admitted to taking it she lost 15 pounds in a month she said it was very debilitating. She didn't basically had no desire to do anything. She didn't want to work out. She didn't want to live. She just wanted to crawl into a ball and just be there. So she got off of it. She said it wasn't for me. She didn't want to eat at all. She she had no interest in food. So if you have no interest in food, you're not going to go to a restaurant. That's true. You're going to just None. eat what you have to eat just to survive, but yeah. you're not going to even want to go out to eat and spend money. And people, a big part of being social is eating. I'm sure these like housewives gatherings and stuff like that, like nobody eats. Nobody. You're right. They just pick at the food. Yeah. That's crazy. And I'm just glad that we both together as a couple, husband, wife, we love food. We're foodies. This is, it ain't like I love food and you don't love food. Cause mm -hmm. I've dated women in the past where they're, Either they're faking it or they don't really have a love for food like we do, like you do. What I call it is a passion for food. I'm passionate about Me food. Me too. 
Me too. I like, think that comes across, like in my YouTube videos. Like and today, stuff. well, would you say we're gonna go eat Saturday? And yeah, I'm in. Sign me up. Yeah. Smash burger. I'm in. Let's do it. Because we create a crave. It's like the reward system, right? Yep. By deciding yeah. what you're gonna eat ahead of time, yes. you're creating a crave, and then yep. you're working towards that by staying on point with your macros. Yep, exactly. And then you satisfy the crave with your reward when it's the cheat meal time. It's yes. all. It's how the brain works, and so I find that we have more satisfying cheat meals that that scratch the itch if we do that if we decide ahead of time then you have something it wor- then you go right back to it's easier to go back to your macro eating and all of that afterwards yeah. Yeah, yeah. but no, we also right. talked about what we're eating tonight and we got excited about that we're going to film true. a video for you for youtube what are we doing again burgers and chili cheese fries we're going to do chili cheese fries and burgers mike's going to film it for his channel because he's never done his burgers on his channel those are bomb.com yeah no. so good we'll do it anyways guys i don't know what's gonna happen like i've said i'm on the fence with it. you've always been really passionate about no it's a shortcut no ozempic and i've been more pro ozempic i'd say but i can i see where i see, I see your point okay if it's option a ozempic option b if no ozempic i could possibly die because i'm morbidly obese and i have all these comorbidities then okay, we'll go with option A. You like that, but for vanity weight, no go. Sorry. I've always said the vanity weight, but and it's the vanity weight people that are having problems. Yeah, that you, they're looking crazy. They're they they're gonna have issues, and not even with the first round of weight loss. Where their issues are gonna come is when they come off of the medication. Yep. They gain the weight back, and they go back on the medication. That is when they're going to start having some serious issues when your body composition gets so twisted that you literally have lost your lean muscle. They're going to be breaking bones and osteoporosis and all those things. We require muscles are required to hold the bones together yes, and do are. all of that. Yes, they are. Pipe in the comments, you guys. Tell us what you think. Tell us your thoughts on this. And I got a, I got a suggestion. Blood libel. One of, I think you should find somebody who had a bad bout with Ozempic and have them talk about it. Interview them. Just to see, get their perspective. I would love to. If you guys know of anybody that has had some experience, positive or negative, I'd like to give everybody the option. I'd love to talk to somebody who had success with it also. I'd love to talk to someone who was able to lose the weight and one year later, one year no medication has been able to maintain the results. That I would like to to know i'd also like to talk to someone who had a poor experience so if you guys if you or you know someone let me know send me a dm or comment and we can connect and we can do a remote show i would love to do that that'd be dope i think so yeah because there has to be awareness on both ends yeah and i don't want to be one-sided because like i said i'm on the fence and i feel like such a freaking I feel like a hypocrite or like a phony baloney because as much as I have this strong opinion about it, like I said, if I was overweight, not even obese, okay? If I say I had 30 pounds to lose, yeah, I would probably go get on it. At least you're being honest. That's the good <laughs> thing. You're not faking it. You're not just trying to sound cool. Like you're just keeping it real. Fuck, I hate to admit that. I hate to admit that, but I do see that it's a serious problem. But yeah. at the same time, now, I'll let me ask you partake. this. Who's doing this more, men or women? I'm assuming the women are. I think women. Okay. I think yeah. women, but I could be wrong. I don't know. But I th- yeah. I do. I think women. All right, you guys. That's the Ozempic conversation. Mike touched on it la- at last episode, and I cut him off saying that's a whole nother episode, and that's what I meant. It's a whole nother episode. But I have to say, I'm on uh, Team Jillian Michaels on this one. I think she's right on the money. I think we have not yet to see the huge fallout, but there's going to be huge fallout. We're going to see a lot of issues as a result of this. And I don't know. I feel bad about it, but yeah, they need to do something about it. I think they need to regulate it better. Way better. It's too loose. Just like they do with pain meds, right? Now yes. it's regulated. They're very strict on who can prescribe pain meds and for what type of procedures. And they're on top of it. If a doctor over prescribes, there's record of it and the feds are on it. Oh, the DEA is showing up at their office yes. quick. They're not playing so anymore. I think Ozempic needs to be like that because yes. there, there's abuse that's happening for, for sure. sure. 100%. For sure. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you guys on the next episode. And for those on Patreon, we'll see you on the after show.